cents could be UTV. I just want to say I support that. Thank you. Keep hustling. Keep Thank working. You. Keep doing what you're doing. I support that in any way, shape, or form. You know well, I'm the Naked Cowboy. It could be UTV. I'm the Naked Cowboy. Look at my boobies. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Or hers. <laughs>
We are all over the place, girl, today. Welcome. How Hi. are you? Hi. I'm glad you're here. I'm Look, everyone. Here. Look who it is. Hey, everyone. It's long Sam. Time, long time. It's Sam. Gee, oh, finally. I thought I had to do this on my own here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but how's everything? I'm glad you made it. I'm, I'm glad I made I'm it. I'm looking forward to this spanking, guys. I don't know what look, to you're you. sp look at the Look what I have here. <laughs> right here. This, this selfie stick has many uses. <laughs> you see it? <laughs> Look, pow, pow, pow. This but you know what? I should do it to myself, too, because hey. uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was running around all day today. You know, we were on the phone before. I was, uh, you know, at, at a meeting, um, coming from far away. I'm driving. I'm trying to multitask. Meanwhile, I'm trying to really cut down on this whole trying to do things while you're driving. Right. You know, especially, uh, you know, the whole texting and, you know, because, I, I mean, when it comes to that, it's like I don't practice what I preach because mm. I'll tell everyone, stop texting, stop texting, don't do it. Meanwhile, I catch myself doing it, and mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to be that person. Right. You know, especially, you know, it's it, it's against the law. It's dangerous, and, you know, but I caught my, you know, I was just, like, so frantic. But we're here now. Yay. <sighs> Deep breath, you know. How are you, Sam? I'm good. I'm good. It feels good to be here. It's been a long time. I know. You're like, you're like my... I'm your, like, baby my sister. everything. Yes, she's my everyone's my baby sister. I'm like everyone's <laughs> auntie. <laughs> I'm like everyone's auntie, but uh, <laughs> but um, we have a great great show tonight, and I'm so happy that you were here. Thank you. Um, you have also a, a, an awesome invited guest that we're going to be speaking do, to. I do. I'm excited to bring her on. Um, I have Miss Jackie Duo Du Burbridge here, who's running for county legislator Ooh. of the 15th district in Suffolk County. It's awesome because she'd be the first black female county legislator if she wins in the special election on March 10th. Look at that. So we don't want to give too much away right mm -mm. now because we want. But you know what? You said that so eloquently. Thank you. That if you would have left it up to me, I would have butchered her name. <laughs> <laughs> I might have still what, butchered it, though. I mean, me and my Spanglish, you know, I perfect that and I, you know, dominate that language. Spanglish. Right. When Absolutely. It, when it comes to Spanglish, I am like fluent in that. You are. So the way you just said that was like so like. Like this is this is your your this first language. This is what I language. do. <laughs> That's what you do. This is what I do. So, um, Bobby, did we get those birthday shout outs yet? Wow. Okay. Ooh. You know what? We're just gonna go straight to OMG. OMG. And OMG. You know, what, what OMG, is OMG. OMG is OMG. What now? Because you know, every time you turn on the news, true, there is always something going on that makes you say, "Oh my God, what now?" Or, True. or it's just anything that's trending, anything that it's going on. Um, I just like to inform my viewers, you know, and just give them a little bit taste of, you know, the crazy things that go out there. But, you know, so let's just okay. go straight into that. Let's get to it. So you see what this whole coronavirus is going on, right? Yes. So Terrifying. supposedly, yeah, uh, apparently thieves stole like 600 rolls of toilet paper out in, in China. <laughs> what were they? So what were they like wiping a bunch of panda bites? I, you like, know, what do I you did need because, 600 rolls of so toilet this, paper for? So this is what happened. So apparently, um, uh, apparently a delivery man was, um, was, jumped by a group of armed robbers while dropping off supplies at a supermarket in Hong Kong, China. So according to Yahoo News, the man was held up by three knife-wielding men who demanded the rolls of toilet paper. <gasps> Authorities say toilet paper has become a hot commodity in the area due to the rapid restocking in various supermarkets along with rice, pasta, hand sanitizer, and other items used for sanitary purposes. Mm. So this delivery man was threatened by these three um, knife-wielding men who took toilet paper worth more than um, $130, which in their, I guess, HK is $1,000. Mm -hmm. So we want to emphasize that we have sufficient toilet roll supply to meet demand. <laughs> the That's temporary shortage was caused by the sudden and unusual surge in demand, you know. Okay, um, that's crazy. Somebody uh, apparently made up a rumor saying that um, there's going to be a shortage out everywhere. And, you know, people panic. Right. They people go, just panic and they they're like, oh, my did. God, like, you know, so. But, you know, toilet paper is very important in our lives. But I um, thought, like, when something's about to go down, like, the first thing you get is, like, bread, milk, 
and water. I guess toilet so paper was going to be the shortage. The okay. That, that was going to be Fair the shortage. Enough. So when you think about it, so what do you do without toilet paper? I mean, I don't want to get Besides baby, Besides baby wipes. Baby wipes like are baby the better wipes. ones. But, right. So there you go. I, I, I do. I like. I always carry some baby wipes. I mean, yeah, you never I know. But, you know, to I, like to, I like to feel fresh, you know? Fair enough. <laughs> but um, so our next uh, OMG is... Um, an Iowa woman claims a man kidnapped and forced oh, her to watch Ruth one. to understand her. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, w what is going on here? So, apparently. Uh, this, this is not the way to educate. A Cedar Rapids man was arrested today after being accused of holding a woman captive and forcing her to watch Roots. Robert Lee Noy, 52, allegedly forced the woman to sit with him at his residence and watch the nine-hour miniseries that chronicles author at Alex Haley's family line, beginning with the capture and enslavement of his ancestor, Kunta, right? Kunta uh, Kunt Kinte. Kunta Kinte, right. So Noe allegedly made her watch the series so she could better understand her racism, the criminal complaint said. When the woman tried to move, he allegedly told her to remain seated and watch the movie with him. Now, <laughs> I don't think do, that's how it works. Do, do, do you think he got across to her? Like, no. do you think that that she learned her lesson or whatever it is her racism was? Like, Absolutely you think he got not. his point across? No, I think he used the same exact tactic that was used on Kunta Kinte and Roots for him to call himself Toby. Like, you can't scare somebody into accepting something. You uh -huh. have to educate them. So how Toby, do you think this is going to turn out for him? Oh, he's going under the jail. <laughs> That's it. So, He's going well, to it, yeah, so that was pretty scary. You get kidnapped and you think that, you know, but here they sit down and watch this movie with me. Yeah, like, no. I'll be like, okay, <laughs> whatever you say, I'll watch this movie. Oh, that movie's great. I'm just going to go along with the movie. You well, know, he but. told her he was going to, like, chop up her body parts and leave them Oh, I don't highway. know about that. That wasn't said. Like, that's not what I read. That's okay. like terrifying. So maybe I, she did watch it. Maybe and, she was and like, I would have been there. Whatever you want. You got some pieces. popcorn? Let's get some popcorn too, you know? like <laughs> Netflix and chill. Yeah, we'll do that. Steroids. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our next OMG is Sharon White debuts white hair after dyeing it red for the past 18 years. That's nice. So, um, That's nice. you know, apparently it's obvious she's following my trends. <laughs> you okay. Are a she is, yes, apparently. So, the talk show uh, host has decided to make big change in her life by dyeing her hair white. Uh, okay. As many as you know, the 67 year old has been rocking her signature red hair for 18 years straight. Wow. And according to People Magazine, you know, however, it looks like she finally wanted to switch things up. So, like um, colorist, her colorist, Jack Martin, was behind the big transformation and shared that it was like, you know, to go you know, with the process. Like, Sharon has 100% white hair. I like it. So, speaking of white hair, uh, today I am rocking my absolute natural hair. It looks As gorgeous. you see. So, usually I have all this hidden behind or underneath you know, extensions, right. or I wear uh, my hair pieces, yeah. my wigs, you know, I like uh, to do that. You know yeah, me as an, like artist, an artist, I like to be different. Right. As an artist, I always like to change it up. Um, I'm always on the go. Yeah. I don't have time to really sit at a salon and no. get my hair done um, how many times a week. I don't have time right. when I have a, a show to do to go, you know, I don't yeah. have that time. Oh my God, I go into the stores and I see this gorgeous hairs and these wigs i'm like i want to say i you know how long it would you take me it you know how long it would take me to get my hair done like that you know so this is why i just i get you know, now the white is my natural for you know, those of you that are always asking me who does my hair um i myself is natural i don't do my hair this is something new to me that i'm coming out of the closet per se with my hair because you know for a woman Grays is like a, a sign of aging, right. a sign, and you always right. try to cover it up because you just don't want to, and it doesn't doesn't blend with your hair and all that. Um, my mom yeah, only with, with, with me, exactly. Yeah, that's my so, point. So it's not only has to do with age, yeah, but also you, you know, if people know my mom. My mom are. is heavily white, and as you can see, look at my hair the way it starts 
So I let I decided also a year and a half ago to let my hair grow out. Right. I no longer dyed it, you know, to cover my grays. I no longer. Um, so my hair has been the most natural and the most um, healthy it has been in a long time. It looks amazing. So I decided today to look at all my. <laughs> For those of you who are watching, look how white my hair is. Yeah, but it's so healthy. Yeah, like, and and there's usually no split ends, nothing. I usually would have some type of a ponytail, some. But today, yes, people, this is uh, my natural hair. Everything you see right here, all natural. So kudos to Sharon. Yes, um, yes. I want to um, encourage all the women who have the grays coming in. To let it go, yes. let it go, let it, let it go. It's natural. It's beautiful. Um, it's a, it's the trend as it is. The yes. girls are are <laughs> dying it and bleaching it. And here I am. That's what I decided. Right. I said I have it already naturally. Just what am I doing? It. So you know, good 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 for her. Good for her. So I'm happy. It's you know, we're starting a trend. Yes. And um, our last one, our last OMG is. Oh, is it? Oh, one of the last oh, ones. Okay. Oh, I, I read about this too. This model blast of racist, you know, racist accessories in New York fashion show. Mm. Now, as you see the picture, if my um, Instagram people are watching Facebook, where you should be on right now, could be UTV, you could see that uh, a model is accessorized with some kind of a makeup or is that makeup or is that some kind of like... I'm I believe it's like some type of props they wanted right, her to wear so, to, to highlight ugly features. So an, uh, an African-American model has spoken out against racist accessories that she was instructed to wear during a New York Fashion Week show. Right. So this is a, a accessory. So the accessories included monkey ears and large synthetic lips that came from a sex doll from an exhibit at the Fashion Institute of Technology's runway show. Mm -hmm. So Amy Lefebvre, Lefebvre, I'm so sorry if I butcher your name, <laughs> 25, has been a model with, for four years. So she recently spoke with the New York Post about her ordeal. She mm -hmm. was working for a showcase that presented the work of 10 alumni students from the school's inaugural Master of Fine Arts class in fashion design. Mm -hmm. um, I can relate. So... In high school, I did go to the fashion um, industries high school, which was the baby sisters to the fashion, you know, institute. Right. So, yes, um, I was a fashion designer in high school. That's awesome. Um, I never knew that. Uh, yes. I, I, <laughs> well, what had happened was. What had happened yeah, What had happened was I failed a sewing class because I didn't stitch a stitch perfectly. Wow. Yes. Well, by they hand, say a by stitch needle. In time saves nine. I don't know what that means. Okay. But. So it was a stitch that I do, had to do backhand, if I remember correctly. Okay. And because it wasn't perfectly, I had to go to summer school from Did Brooklyn, from Brooklyn where I lived, to Manhattan every day in the summer no. to make up, to so able to graduate. No. Just no. That's terrible. <laughs> so that just and dashed don't you your dash fashion dreams. my dreams dream of fashion. But you're a fashionista, though, so Hello. it still worked out. Pero, of course, you know, things always turn out for the better. Things don't always turn out the way you think. That's true. Okay, and look at me now. Do you know who I am? Linda Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> That's my MO. Do you know who I am? And speaking of fashionista, our last OMG. So... <laughs> this is Little Pump. Like okay. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Yes. So, w you see this picture, what do you say? Like, what do you, what it comes to mind? I mean, I see a lot of fashion faux pas. You know, I mean, there's like a, and, and then the sweat stain is kind of gross. It's just a lot of different things going on here that are very conf confusing. It, I don't know it what is, it's right? Called. Like, yeah. I, I don't, like, you want to be, like, I don't know if this is a joke or if this right. is really a style right. or, I mean, things are, uh, are is definitely not how we grew up. Right. You know, um, things are not like what we think. So that is definitely, I guess, to some being fashionista, is that, would you consider that fashionista? No, because, you know, I think no matter, you know, where you stand or, or what you're trying to go for, I think being pulled together and being, um, you know, being purposeful in your, in your attire, 
make sense in, in this. I mean, he could be making fun of, of young ladies who like to do the duck face, or maybe he's practicing it out for his own future. But um, I just think that, you know, he he's not really pulled together, and, and that's just... That's well, others were saying, well, that's the style now. That's how rappers nowadays... Sweat stains um, are never the style, guys. Never the style. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> so that that is that, and... and um, I guess if it tickles his fancy and he feels great with that, then you go for it. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll pass on this I'll, style. I'll pass on the style, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It looks like he took it off a little doll or a little, <laughs> little like girl. Looks the gym you know? and, and went into his little sister's closet and it's not fitting right. It's right, just... right. Um, I just want to give a, um, a quick... Um, Oh, our prayers, our prayers for, you know, that race car driver that just had the fiery crash at the, uh, at the uh, NASCAR, uh, Ryan Newman, where, oh uh, yeah, it was, well, now there was like a little controversial because the person who actually uh, won, which I don't have his name here right now, he kind of like celebrated when he won, but a lot of people were like, how could you if he just, he was just in a fiery crash almost dying, and, you're, and he's apparently said, I wasn't aware that he was hurt. I didn't even know that he was right. hurt. So, uh, and you can see, you know, if you go online, uh, you will actually find, um, you know, you see oh, the actual so crash funny. itself. Oh, and it was actually gosh, very, very uh, scary. It was very heartfelt. It was, it was very, uh, it was devastating to watch, right. you know, but thank God um, he kind they kind of made it through. He's in the hospital recuperating. So thank all God. our hearts uh, and prayers are going to go for a speedy uh, recovery. Right for that but um absolutely bobby any birthday shout outs no, oh my lord okay you know what we're gonna get to those birthday shout outs in uh in in a little while but first we're gonna go to a commercial break and as soon as we come back we're gonna be back with our special guest so stay tuned see you soon San Pablo, y hace más de 20 años me enamoré de una colombiana. Viajé a su país y conocí un estilo de café muy distinto, muy especial. Ahora tostamos cafés excelentes, con alturas y microclimas diferentes, resultado en una taza muy compleja y muy rica. Un sabor nuevo en el mundo. Fue un éxito. And I even got to keep the girl. Hello, hey, we have an amazing special guest, and I'm very excited. Um, this is something that actually pretty new to my show because you know my show tends to be very um, quirky at times, you know, fun, exciting, and, and, and always things going on. But actually, um, this is something more on on a business, serious kind of, and, and I want Sam to kind of introduce her. Sam, who is our amazing, lovely guest? So today we have with us uh, a good friend of mine and someone that I personally admire, um, Jackie Duo Du, right? Mm -hmm. Burbridge. Yay. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And Jackie, like I stated before, is currently running 
for Suffolk County Legislator Ooh, for the 15th district. Yes. Amazing, amazing. She would be, I'll let you tell us what would happen. Yes. See, you <laughs> say it. It's like, we're the spokesperson for She's just here yeah. physically, you but you know. I'm like a cheerleader. I'm so, so yeah. proud. Part of my campaign is an effort to make history in this county as the first black woman that would ever sit on the Suffolk County Legislative Body. So if you want to make a little history, you want to make sure that all voices are heard and respected, um, including that of the black woman. If you're in the 15th district, which is Copeg, Amityville, Windanch, Wheatley Heights, East Farmingdale, portions of West and North Babylon, and I think I got all of it. Yeah, Come out and vote, March 10th. March 10th. Linda, yeah. I didn't tell Linda. That is a special date. Is that your birthday? No. Well, not mine, but it's my son's. Okay. Yes. yes. And we have to give him a special shout out to mm -hmm. my son Gianni because not only is his birthday March 10th, but on um, March 30th is a, um, uh, it's going to be, it's like a bittersweet. Um, he's leaving for the military. Oh. Surprise, Sam. Yes, Aww. he enrolled. He's going to be going to the um, National wow. well, yeah, the National Army uh, Reserves. And yes. um, so March 10th, yes. Mm. Oh, oh, you're tearing up. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. I'm good now, okay, Sam? Don't start me. So March oh, 10th wow. is a great day, and it's going to turn out to be amazing and phenomenal for Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, so I, 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 I am fascinated by all this, and I love to um, be schooled, and I love, you know, to be lectured on, or, uh, especially when it comes with the community mm -hmm. and what, you know, so I love and I want to hear everything that you're proposing. What is your, um, you know, what, what's your aspirations to do as if and when? Because mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Got to claim it. Because you will. Claim it. Claim it. You yeah. will. So what what is in store? What is the, the difference that you want to make? The difference that I want to make is, you know, I um, I come from a background of activism and advocacy and um, working at nonprofit, which has always been in service of others. So the difference that I really want to see in my community is to be able to provide for them a voice that is a true advocate at that level of government to make sure that um, that the, the needs of the community are being properly communicated to the resources that exist and to the power structure that exists to make sure that those resources come back to our community. There's a real need for truly affordable housing for our young people. There's a need for a foundation upon which young people can actually um, survive and thrive in this county. There's a real need for job development, job mm -hmm. creation. Um, our education needs to be equally accessible to all children totally and agree. quality education and quality ch uh, child care accessible to all children in our area. So those are the things that I'm really passionate about. I'm, I'm, deeply concerned about the quality of our drinking water, mm. which I want to make sure is, um, you know, cared for in our communities so that when resources come up for testing and improvements, mm -hmm. because it, you can't open the paper now every other day right. and there's a story of some toxins were found and right. it's in this area and this and that area. And it's just going to continue, right. unfortunately, um, while the work is being done to clean that up. But I want to make sure that while that's happening, that our community doesn't get left behind. Mm when resources are being allocated and when, you know, that work is being done. Same thing for conversations around drug use in our communities. You mm. know, there's a lot of talk about opioid use. I think Absolutely. that um, the district is, is uh, heavily minority. So you tend to have that conversation kind of on the outskirts. You know, one really mm -hmm. has conversations at the forefront about opioid use being like a black issue or a brown mm -hmm. issue. But in reality it is. You know, mm -hmm. so many of our kids are sipping lean and popping pills mm -hmm. and... Just it's amazing. It's you it know, is. and it's sad, and, mm -hmm. it, and it's you know because um, I've you know I, I've experienced those losses through especially my really? children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they've Their had friends. every day. You know, every day, God forbid, but like every other month or something, you hear, oh, you know, so and so, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, I remember. Oh, you know, they. I'm like. Yeah. What, what do you mean? So many no, young you know, people, right? Um, so many young people, and it just gets closer and closer to home, mm -hmm. and it's just like, it's like you 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 want to be angry at the kids mm -hmm. because you say don't you know better yeah, you know it's like right it's like you you want to but it's like where's the root you know where yeah. is it really coming from? that's that's where you really have to we have to focus in and who are you know where is deriving from those are the ones that we have to really go after and it's mm -hmm. so sad but yeah definitely you know we always say we have to make a difference we have to but obviously something's not being done enough mm -hmm. because we still have this problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think I grew up in West Babylon, which is one of the areas that you'd cover. And um, for me, I've, I've personally lost um, childhood friends to the opioid crisis. And that area is, is 
majority Caucasian, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that there is a, a level of disappointment that people are trying to cope with through mm -hmm. opioid use. And it's important that, you know, especially these schools are jumping on it. A lot of times I, I found out West Babylon waits until students are in 11th and 12th grade to really tackle these issues. And by then it's kind of too late mm -hmm. because they're starting Much earlier, right, yeah, you know? Sure. And um, the educators are a, a good frontline resource. Right, absolutely. You know, they know what's going on in the yeah. classrooms with the kids. And they're, they're, they're hearing what our kids are talking about yeah. on more than we are. Mm -hmm. And they're spending more time with them technically than we are. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's absolutely a, an important cause. And, and I, you know, we're, we're the heart. Long Island is the heart of the opioid crisis. So I'm so glad to hear that, that one of our leaders is ready to take that on as an mm -hmm. issue. Absolutely. Are, are you a um, born and raised Long Islander? I'm born in Brooklyn, but I'm in Copac since I'm about two. Are you? Hey. <laughs> Brooklyn's in, Copac in the since house. Two years old. And I also Shout have to, to point Copac. this out. My shirt says Girl Power because you see here, uh, this is Women Empowerment please. right now. Yay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're all about supporting mm -hmm. empowerment. And as you can see, um, this is a great start to a great year mm -hmm. to actually uh, start, making, um, start making real moves. You know, and, and it's great to hear that you're out there making a difference. Mm -hmm. Wanting even to be, you know, the first, the first of anything is yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, Seriously. so more and power And so next to month you. is Women's History Month, so we're going to make some women's history. Out here. Yes. Oh, we're making history. <laughs> make I want to make history, too. Uh, but yes. Right here. We're making history right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right here as we speak. Uh, so, yeah. So, I'm glad, yes, I'm also a, a, a Brooklyn Knight. Oh, yeah? Yes. I, I was born and raised in East New York. Okay, nice. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been here for, I want to say, close to 24, uh, oh, wow. 24 years. Okay, wow. so, so 24 years. home now, yeah. Yeah, it is home now. Home so, now. You know, you come out here yeah. to Long raise Island. your family. And, right. You know, and that's and what I'm doing, raising my family and, here. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is amazing. That is great. Yeah. Um, so I, I do have um, some questions okay. that um, I think a viewer had written up that wanted to ask but while while i look for that question because as you know i was all, all over the place sam mm -hmm. take over okay <laughs> so i'm gonna take over here oh <laughs> one of the um <coughs> things i want to ask it, it, it might be your sweater hitting oh. the mic um so one of the things <clears throat> i want to ask is what made you decide mm -hmm. to run? Like that's a big undertaking. And yeah. what, what what pushed you? Oh, and I you know, I forgot to mention your party. She's yes. with the working family party. So um Ooh, that's the yes. same party as Elizabeth Warren. Well, Elizabeth Warren and I actually are both registered Democrats, but okay. um, you know, we, we do have well, I am running on the working families party line right. in this election and I am um a Democrat and that's actually to your question is Part of the reason why I got in this race is because at the time that it came to be announced that there would be, there was only one Democrat um, wow. that was named, or really there was only one person in the race at right. all at that time. And I just felt like um, with the seat coming open for the first time in such a long time that people should have the opportunity to actually have a choice, right. you know. And so to hear more than one person talk about what their platform would be, what their issues are, what their vision for the county is, and what their vision for the district is. So I decided to present myself as a choice, <laughs> and here I am. And, and um, to add to that question, um, how long have you been involved in the whole uh, politics aspect of it? So I, I, you know, I'm not a politician, and I um, haven't been involved in it in this way. Um, like I said, I spent a lot. Of, I spent almost all of my career in nonprofit, and a lot of that was legislative advocacy. So working with um, politicians mm -hmm. and with elected officials, and then through volunteerism, I've had the opportunity to sit with a lot of elected officials to talk about the needs of the community. And it wasn't, you know, I thought I, I, I have a deep appreciation for policy and the way mm -hmm. that it can actually impact people's lives. And so it, as I thought about like a natural trajectory of my career, maybe one day, but uh, not today, you know, I right. wasn't thinking it would be like, okay, March, February, 2020, that I would be running for office. But again, like I said, when I saw that there wasn't an opportunity for people in the community to really exercise the true power of their, their vote, the activist in me kind of said, well, let's right. do something about that. Right. Do and you, so do you feel more because um, you, you, you sit and, and watch and say not enough is being done? Um, the, it, are you here to, to add or to make a change? Or do you say, I, you know, did you, do you really see yourself and say, 
I, I'm going to make change. I'm going to be that person who's going to make that change or make that happen that hasn't been happening. So mm -hmm. that's a really that's good, good question, question because as I'm talking to voters, I'm hearing from them the sentiment that not enough has been done and that there's a need for more. And I, um, you know, I'm, it's it's my natural inclination to kind of to, to fight for, you know, what needs to be done and to step into that void wherever possible, which is really what I dedicated my life to. You know, I have an MBA. I, I chose not to go the corporate route. I chose to go into nonprofit, which is not the highest paying field, mm -hmm. you know, because I wanted to have a career that was dedicated toward actually improving and impacting the lives of people who need it the most. And um, so, yeah, I mean, where, where I see a need, I definitely have every intention of kind of stepping in to fill it. I had the opportunity to spend one year working in Nassau County's government, so I know um, that there are things that were done on that side that I saw that could be implemented here um, mm. in terms of improving relationships with law enforcement, in mm. terms of um, dealing with housing developments as they come into the area and the way that they look out for community and try to protect people who are already there Amazing. so that people don't end up feeling pushed out. So, I mean, I definitely wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think that there was real, um, that I had something real to offer and something mm. substantial and significant to offer. You know, I could have just oh, said, wow. okay, well, there's somebody in the race. Seems like a nice guy. Let's just go for it. Right. Well, mm -hmm. you know, funny you should say that because um, I, I, I'm sure there's a lot like, I guess, me, out there who just kind of like goes with the flow mm -hmm. because uh, you just like, you're kind of like not fed up, but it's just like, it is what it is and whatever happens, mm -hmm. ha you know, like you don't take and partake and, and are, are, are actively involved and in knowing what's going on with your community, especially, but the more uh, networking that I do and I meet more people, amazing people like Sam and uh, connecting oh. me to amazing people like yourself and just the more and more, it just, uh, it's more intriguing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's more, um, it's more fascinating to, to, you know, it's just like, um, let's say a, a Bible, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a religious person and I've never, I can never pick up a Bible per se and read a Bible, but if someone was to preach to me like a one-on-one -on -one and talk mm -hmm. to me, like I'll understand. And it's interesting mm -hmm. as, a, a, as you speak to me about the history of the Bible. Mm -hmm. what, even even I've picked up a uh, children's Bible mm -hmm. and I understand it right. better on their level than yeah. to actually pick up a Bible. Like I don't know how many people actually pick up a Bible unless you're like really true religious. Mm -hmm. right. But like, so the same thing with politics. Like I, I, I can't listen really to the news mm -hmm. and, and just sit there and to me it's like, okay, it's boring. I have no clue what he's saying. I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. That's my attitude. Right. Mm -hmm. But I have um, people who are actually, um, you know, in front of me and explaining right. and mm -hmm. in detail. It's like more intriguing. And, and I, I just feel like there should be more mm. of like, community Absolutely. settings and and more um like uh on. like sort of what we do sam like a right. networking yeah. but let you know right. and i think it's great and it fascinates you know fascinates me because mm -hmm. i not only as a black woman but uh, as a woman itself because mm -hmm. you know as a woman itself it's so hard to even try to you know mm -hmm. to push ahead and sometimes. try to get yeah. you know uh you know trying to break down those barriers yeah. right. so you're still right though a lot of people do kind of feel like um, you know, they don't, they don't want to follow along. They're tired of it. You mm -hmm. know, things are, things don't really change and, you know, things just kind of stay the same, but there's really not any, imp not any part of your life that's not impacted by the people that you vote to represent you or that someone else is voting to represent you right. if you're not actually getting out there and doing it. And so you're right. It is, um, I think it's incumbent upon the people who are in office to have those open doors of communication mm -hmm. with people that they represent, you know, so I think the newsletter, especially uh, nowadays on Facebook or right. something digital is My favorite so platform. easy to do, you know? And yeah, absolutely. I can see it. Like <clears throat> I can see something like if you have, you know, like in, you know, you're, you're out there um, getting the votes of people, or you're trying to understand their people, and right. you come together and let them ask the questions and right. see, you can see what is it that the people actually are, are what is the attention that they want? Right. What is the focus that you, they want you to focus on? Because sometimes you think you want to make a difference in one aspect mm -hmm. of what, but then again, they're asking for they're, something they're like, well, that's not really important right now. What's important right. is this right now. What's going, you know, and then it makes you open your eyes. You know, you're right. Let me get to it, you know? Yep. Like, so I think it's so important more of you know the community and uh, and what is their input and what is that they want right i right. don't mm -hmm. you know that feedback absolutely. yeah that feedback and and that's what I will, that's what definitely i'll be there but like <laughs> you know like and you should hello. do that you should do these hello. people work for you <laughs> yeah they work for us i agree i just came back from um 
black and Latino caucus up in Albany where I got to sit with my leaders mm -hmm. and talk to them and, 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 you know, having that seat at the table, having that opportunity to have one-on-ones, that's, that's really where the change is going to come from because, mm -hmm. you know, when, when they're really in the thick of it, when our leaders are in the thick of it, they're, 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 they're kind of doing the, the, I want to say like the road routine the stuff. stuff. Yeah, you know, done, but when yeah. they when they have these opportunities to really meet with us, see what our needs are, mm -hmm. that impact that. is the so deeper, that really, right? Yeah, the ones yeah. that really are about yeah. it, they appreciate that for sure. So it's meaningful to me as a constituent, as someone who runs a nonprofit, as someone who's a very vocal in, in my community to have those opportunities. And, um, you know, I've been, I, I got to say, personally, I've been blessed to get to talk to our local leaders and, and you know, have lunch, just sit with mm -hmm. them, eat with them, learn from them. You know, even, I may not agree with everything, mm -hmm. but I, I just gotta say that it's it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to, to watch somebody get in the race and see how they're they're moving and see what the different, I, I, I want to see Sam coming along yeah. with some idea for the, the future. No, no, uh -oh. not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh -oh. But one of the things that I want to say <laughs> that's so word. meaningful yeah. about this race is like there's a there's a candidate from my hometown. He's not in my party. He's in the Republican Party. That's mm. cool. Mm. Seeing you, that's just super cool. <laughs> you know, Jason. Um, the 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 progress mm -hmm. you know there's there, there's a black woman there's a a black man there there's this there's a white man like just seeing like there's there's a, a lot of options yeah options yeah we have options and mm -hmm. real options and it's not just the same as it's always been I love it yeah and and that's and, how it should be and that's what gets people like you were saying that's what gets mm -hmm. people you know intrigued yes paying attention yes yeah and saying you know what it is is more like saying like like I said I'm very um. I like things to be told as is and, and straightforward, no beating around the bush. Don't mm -hmm. don't 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 use fancy words on me. <laughs> Not because I don't understand it. Yeah, it's just, get just you get to the point yeah. and you're you you know, you you're listen, we're we're the same person here. Talk to me straight, you know. Yeah. We grew, you know what I'm saying? You need to be real with me in order for me to believe you. You mm -hmm. know, I don't wanna hear a speech. That was written that like right, whole, like, right, want, no. you know, like <laughs> listen. You want it nobody, real? I want it real. You know why? Yeah. And you know why this show works because this is exactly it's what real. it is. <laughs> this is like I'm the most unorthodox host that you would have because Definitely. I have <laughs> nothing Definitely. scripted. Yeah, nothing is you know rehearsed. You know, I'm not trying to be the next Oprah here. Right. You know, I am me, <laughs> so you're gonna take me as I am. And, you know, I want to be real, so I want the people to be real with me as well, you know. And I don't know why. I have a knack to, like, see right through people. She you know? does. I do. But, you know, that comes, you, you know. You I'm, definitely help me weed out some. Right? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. you know, because. Some time wasters. I'm, I'm an artist, yes. foremost. <laughs> you know, I'm in the music business for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So starting from there along, I, you know, I've dealt with all types of people. And, you know, uh, God bless me with the ability to still, you know, stand strong mm -hmm. and continue. And now this new year is has begun to be so amazing already that I'm just, like, baffled. So starting, I have to, like, pat myself. And I'm so excited about this. So over uh, this past weekend, you can't really see. It's stamped and sealed. But so could be UTV is now officially uh, a business. Oh, and yay! I'm so excited. So now we're going to show that way. For sure. <laughs> Everybody? Yeah. Congratulations. It's, it's, it's raised. It's, it's raised. That's it's right. Raised. <laughs> I feel it. I can feel it. I got to touch it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Congratulations. So, oh. yes. <laughs> so, I'm very excited um, that, you know, little by little, everything that I have been aspiring to, you know, I've, I've been one to um, take the small steps in the long road because I just never, I don't want to rush to things not mm -hmm. knowing. Just, you know, like a lot of people who know me as an artist, um, I don't have stars in my eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't go, I don't f believe what people say. Like, I'm a true believer in, you know, show me the money. You know, like, don't talk, you know. Right. And I, that's why, that's why she says, like, we filter out a lot of people. Yeah. Because it's all about reading people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, don't try to, you know, not me. I've been this for too long, you mm -hmm. know. So I do everything step by step, you know, um, with care, you know, care and be careful at the same time of what I'm doing and how I do it, you know. Right. And it's taken me uh, quite a bit to actually get 
to this point, and believe it or not, you know, you think piece of paper, this is a piece of paper, you no, know, it's but it's like it means a lot, it's you know. Accomplishment. It, it is an accomplishment because from here on, you know, um, now it opens the door to many other things and opportunities and projects that I've had in the works mm -hmm. that I couldn't push forward. So, MWBE. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you can go for your minority yeah. women, <laughs> right? Go. Minority yeah, women yeah, business. What's I, the E stand for? Enterprises. Enterprises. Mm -hmm. So that's. I that's haven't even gone that deep, so we'll talk about that. I'm just happy that, like, you know, now. You can, you know, write me a check to Cooper UTV and I'll be straight into my account. And then hey, I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> that's important. So that's I am check. glad that now uh, uh, it's officially. It's a business. Yeah. Right there, so, so I'm happy. I'm happy. Yes, you should be you. happy. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So, so, so Jackie, um, yes. going back to people being able to have conversations with you over the next um, week. Where can we Where can we meet up with you? Where can we find you? Oh, Lord, you asked me a question. I need, I have so many things <laughs> I can't see I in know front of Thursday. me. Thursdays. Thursdays, there's a Meet the Candidate Forum right. at the Wine Dance VFW. Okay. Um, I think the start time of that is 7.30 or 7? I believe it's around 7, 7.30. Mm -hmm. I'm having my own um, Canvas and Meet the Greet, uh, Meet and Greet Candidate event at the Amityville VFW on Saturday. From 10 to 1? From... Or 9 to 1? No, it's not 9. It's... Oh my gosh, you're really fooling with my memory. I think I should know this. I'm sorry. I think it's 11 to 3, actually. That's okay. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that... No, that's not. No. Okay. So, I think it's 11 to 3 from Saturday. Um, forgive me for not remembering. There's... I mean, there's literally something every single day. Right. But you can follow along with me on Facebook at Jackie Burbage for 15 that's one five so all of our events will be coming up and will be listed and posted there you can also find me online at jackieburbage.com but for this week I think those are the those are the two biggest like public things okay Thursday night in wine dance Saturday late morning early afternoon in Amityville all right both sounds good views. That sounds good. Well, I'm going to shameless plug myself guys. Mm -hmm. oh, so course. I have an event <laughs> coming up. Yes, I got the us. honor to speak at TEDx Deer Park. Yeah. Amazing. I am so Ooh, excited. Yeah, that's I, I um, you know, I did a practice run this week with the Toastmasters and um Wine Dance. And thank you guys for allowing mm -hmm. me to do that. Thank you um to Mr. Brian Cohen for setting that up. It was great to get feedback and just get my speech more refined. I'm going to be discussing the topic of intergenerational hostility Ooh, wow. to make it the boomers versus the millennials, uh -oh. you know, oh, and how we can how we can come together and, and, and work together. And one of the important places that we need to do that is in politics. There yes, is a absolutely. for um, Jackie's event on Thursday. We're calling all millennials. Calling all millennials. Come out. You're going to get to meet with all three candidates mm -hmm. and ask them real questions. Right. <laughs> She's you know? a PR person. There you, go. <laughs> you guys know that's what I love to do is um, share information and share and spotlight people that I'm proud of and make sure that people have, you know, all their choices all their opportunities presented to them. I that's like to right. make good decisions based yeah. off Informed of education. Decisions. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know. She's such an amazing person. We connected. I mean, the first day that we seen each other was like, love at first sight. No. <laughs> All right. I had a crush on Linda first, guys. <laughs> she, going back to her hair, she always had these cool hairstyles, different colors. And I'm like, this lady can rock any color. I got to be her friend. <laughs> Thank, you. Be my friend. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And, um, well, I am your friend now. Yeah, we're super Such close. You're, you're my family. Aww. Yeah, so it's great. Yes. But um, so uh, like always, you know, time flies when you're having fun. It does. And um, I can only um, say thank you so much for thank joining you. on my show. Um, thank you guys both. I want I want you, you so to much, once welcome. again to let them know um, what is the date and where can you know the voting process and where they can go uh, March 10th. March 10th. Um, if you live in one of those towns I mentioned earlier, it's your regular voting place on March 10th. There's early voting that starts nine days ahead at the um, East Farmingdale Fire, Fire Department. That information you can also find on my website for times, um, JackieBurbridge.com once again. But yes, come out March 10th, Women's History Month. We're going to make some women's history in Suffolk County. And um, yeah. All right. Yeah, all, right. Ooh, ooh. all right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Sam Law. Thank um, we you. Started, we had a rocky start there. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, oh, I, think I, I think I recovered nicely. Yeah, we recovered. You know, we always got to know how to, you know, blend in there. But uh, thank you so much, everyone, to all my loyal uh, viewers, my Instagrammers. Please go on Facebook, follow the show, and on Strong Island TV. Share, 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 because you know what I say? 
Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. I love you all. I see you next time. Ne same place right here. Linda Lynn presents Good For You TV. Los amos. Los quiero. Have a great night. See you next time. Bye. There's no losing, only learning. There's no failure, only opportunities. And there's no problems, only solutions. So to me, what failure is, failure is the mother of all success. If it wasn't for Michael Jordan getting cut from his ninth grade basketball team, he wouldn't have became Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know, if it wasn't for, uh, I seen an, an article the other day where they were talking about Oprah Winfrey and how she got fired because she wasn't good for television. You know, the, you got people like Walt Disney who got fired, if I'm not mistaken, from a newspaper saying he had no imagination. All they can do is learn and come back bigger, better, stronger, because all it's going to do is lead you in the right direction. See, if you're always winning, then you don't really understand what it is to win. You, you got to take those losses. You got to take those hits. There's got to be the valleys, the peaks, the ups, the downs. In order for you to, when it does happen, you go, wow, que rico. You know, this is what it's all about. And not only that, it's never about making it, guys. It's always about maintaining it. That's the toughest part.